Today I want to speak on the sanctity of marriage. And this will be a two-part video. And in this first part, I want to concentrate on the very first marriage, when God instituted the sanctity of marriage. And when we pick it up, we pick it up in chapter 2 of Genesis, in verse 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would name them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, and to all the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helpmeet for him. You see, God already knew what he was going to do. He knew that he was going to make a helpmeet for Adam, but he first had to create a need. And that's a wonderful thing about our God. He just didn't give him a wife right off the bat without Adam realizing that he was not complete. He had to realize that he was in need of something. And so God brought all the animals unto Adam so that he could give them names. And when he saw the animals coming to him, he saw that they were made both male and female. And he wondered why there wasn't a female for him. He was wondering why there wasn't a helper for him. And he realized that he had a need. He was not complete. And when God created that need, that's when God moved in. It says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and he brought her unto the man. You see, God now fulfills that need in this woman. You know, it's the same thing when we look at the aspect of salvation. God created a need. Man must realize that he's a sinner and that he needs a Savior. And God did that when he made the law on Mount Sinai and, had, and gave it to Moses. And that law of Moses, as so frequently called, was something that was given to show man that he was a sinner and that he needed a Savior. God did create that need by the giving of the law. And then he fulfilled that need by giving his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die in our place, on our cross, shed his blood for our sins, so that we could be saved from our sins. It's a wonderful thing that God has done. God creates a need. Just as he did, Jesus did in the fourth chapter of John. He created a thirst for that Samaritan woman at the well. Where she said, Sir, give me to drink. She wanted that living water when Jesus created that thirst. I wonder, are you thirsty? Have you come to a place in your life where you realize that you're a sinner? And that you need a Savior? That Savior is Jesus Christ. Come to Him, and He will get rid of your guilty stains of sin. And it's all because of the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ that that is possible today. So as we come back to this passage in Genesis, we see that God fulfills that need in Eve. And he brought her unto the man. Could you imagine the very first woman created by the very hands of God? I can just see Adam right now with his eyes bugged out and giving that <whistles> when it comes to seeing that first woman Eve. And he must have been a good looking guy too because she didn't run away. It wasn't like the Bride of Frankenstein where the Bride of Frankenstein sees him and she's like, ah! Well, that wasn't the case here. She was a beautiful woman. And he was a handsome man. And God brought them together. And he performed the first marriage ceremony, if you will. 
he brought the first man and woman together in holy matrimony. And I want you to notice, too, the time period that this happened. This was before the fall. And we have a undefiled man and an undefiled woman, holy, and they are given to each other by God. And it's a wonderful picture of the future when the church will be presented to Jesus Christ. We read in Ephesians chapter 5, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. That marriage someday in heaven between Christ and his church will be between two undefiled, a bride, the church, and a bridegroom, which is Christ. Both at that time, of course, Christ never had sin, but the church has sin today, doesn't it? But then it will not. It will be without spot. It will be without blemish, joined to the holy, harmless, and undefiled Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful picture, is it, back in Genesis, of two undefiled people coming together? And we'll have the same thing in heaven when the undefiled Christ is wed to the undefiled church. It's a beautiful thing, is it not? And this is a message that we need to get out to our young people today who are contemplating marriage. They need to know what marriage signifies, what it's all about, so that it's not looked upon as, as a mockery as it is today when we have divorce on demand, if you will. But that is a holy thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a gift of God given to mankind to build the building blocks of society. And that's why society is in such a bad situation today. It's because marriage, that building block of the family, has been torn down. But we'll get into that in video two. Let's get back to Genesis. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. It's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Adam was now complete. His need was met by God in a wonderful way, the woman Eve. Now when you look at the Hebrew words for man and woman, you see that the man is ish and the woman's word is isha. In other words, friends, the man's word is not complete without the woman's word. Ish is not complete without that A being tagged on the, e the end of it to make it Isha. Then is Ish complete. Amen? And that's the wonderful thing about this. The wonderful thing about marriage. The man, Adam, seeing a need and God fulfilling that need in that beautiful woman named Eve. What God has put together, let not man put asunder. Video 2 will be coming up shortly. And remember, preachers and laymen unite. Unite upon the authority of the Word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen.